All right, hello everybody. This will be the second video for the beginner owl and a nuke. On the first video, I carved all this out, so let's get on with doing some uh, owl details. So, if you look inside the owl's eyes, I already kind of just like when I could concentrate, I put a couple little dots there with a pen. So that's where its eyes are going to be. I'm going to try. I'm going to try these um, mampa tools, these eye cutter bits in this eye. I like the way I did a. I did an eagle the other day, and I like the way they turned out for the eagle. So I got these bits here, right here. That's what you get in a set. Just uh, Google Mampa Tools, or if you look in the description below, I think there's a, I got a link that will send you to Mampa Tools right here. They're from Korea. I did buy this set. Um, so these eyeball burners, um, saber tooth. Tools makes them too, and you can get other ones that uh, burn eyes like concave um, uh, diamond burst. So this is my Fordham piece. This is a quarter inch burst. So you can see here that um, so, some are bigger and smaller, like that's quarter inch. That's one eight. So this one be, be for a die grinder or your Fordham, and this one would be for your Dremel, the one eighth. The Fordham doesn't really spin fast enough to burn the eyes, but it does. You just have to hold it for a lot longer, like. I suggest, you know, something like this won't work very well with a Fordham. You'd have to get a, probably a die grinder. You know, and the size of your owl eyes, this is a fantasy owl. Owls can be whatever you want to be, them to be for the very beginner. So just, you know, you could do, you could do bigger eyes like this size. You can do smaller eyes. They're all what, whatever you want to do. Actually, let's see this size of this one. That's a pretty that's a pretty big one. That would be pretty neat to do that one. Maybe I'll do this size, a size bigger. And then uh put the smaller one inside this one. Anyways, this, you know, you can carve the eyes too. You don't you don't have to go out and buy this this uh eye cutter, right? So you can carve them too. There's lots of videos out there. You know, you can use like a spade bit too, hollow it out, and you can buy fake eyes. Um, I don't ex I, like the. You can buy the plastic fake eyes for pretty cheap on Amazon and eBay, but I don't suggest buying the fake, the plastic ones for um, outdoor pieces because they fade and they you, you, they crack and stuff like that. So the plastic ones are pretty well junk for outdoors. If you're gonna do outdoor ones, I'd probably buy the real glass ones. Even f something like this, you know, I don't think I'd put plastic ones in there. I'd probably spend more money and buy the real glass ones. But let's uh, get this on the Fordham. And uh, try and burn those eyes in. Okay, so I got my one here, and this is important, like um, to get the eyes to line up to the same same spot. You know, I always kind of mess mine up so they're never identically across from each other, so they're kind of googly eyes owls. But so I'm going to do the first burn. It's going to be hard to see. I can do the first burn in there, get it deep inside there best I can. I don't know if you guys will be able to see too well on the video because I'll have my camera on the overhead and I'll be like this. And then once that first one's in there, then I'm going to find one to do a second burn inside there so it will kind of make it seem like there's a pupil. You know, and if it doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. It's like carry on and um, who cares, right? Yeah, sorry. I don't know how well you guys are going to see. Oh, I guess I could do it that way. But then I can't line them up. Uh, can't line this up very good, so... Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say or do because if I do it that way, you'll be you won't see it. So
Okay, 100% before I say anything else, don't be a Jordy. You know, this whole friggin' room was full of smoke. I wasn't wearing my desk mask, my smoke mask. So, you know, do it outside. You don't want to get that smoke inside your lungs. Don't be a Jordy. So, in the video you see I swore because, well, the eye's kind of looking that way. I didn't really center it that well. But they're both pretty well centered. This one's a little bit lower this side than this side, but it's okay. I think it looks pretty equal to me. Um, I will clean all this up with the sander and we'll detail in here. What I'm going to do next is, um, you see the, from the first video, I found that I carved deeper and I got this rot pocket. Well, it's bark pocket, rock pocket, whatever. And then I noticed it was starting to come through right here too. So to make this equal and more like a rotten piece, you know, you don't have to do this. I'm not going to film doing it, but I'm going to carve behind this owl really deep on the background and I'm going to make it all look kind of rotten like this just from about here up and around and then I'll carve all the lots of this stuff away right so it's going to be like the owls coming off the background so it's you know even though you did the undercuts up here it's not attached to the background so I'll get that done off camera because I'm going to crank some music I'm going to start off with this um, three cutter one of these cheap Chinese burrs this one's a pretty bit big one for your dremel you know, in the first video, I, I broke a Dremel flex shaft, so I got to be super careful not to break um, the flex shaft in this one, too. So I'll do that off camera, crank the music, put my dust mask on, have a good time. Okay, so three rules in life. Well, four rules in life I was raised with. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, and don't mess around with your friends, old lady. So I'd be lying to you. If I tried to say that I have the best ideas, because I don't, sometimes I have the worst ideas. Doing this back here, let's see if we can get you some better lighting. See how deep that is in there? That was a bad idea. I should have just left the back flat, not tried to carve it deeper, and carry on. So, oh boy. Now let's talk about the owl. Sorry, just uh, my mind's kind of... <clears throat> let's talk about the owl wings and the owl textures. I'm sure that's why all you're here. Okay, so I got a bit uh, thin tip pin, so I'm not uh, putting big black marker on here. So here's your top thing. You can do your wings any way you want to do your wings. There's a whole bunch of different styles, you know. So there's one here. First of all, I got to make sure this, this microphone's working. Okay, it's working. So there's two layers. Let's do three. So this top one will be, you can do whatever. I know Bap, hi Bap, hi Laura. He does crisscrosses on his. I just kind of do cuts like this, this little cuts. Then these wings, well, first of all, <clears throat> what you gotta do, excuse, <clears throat> excuse me. That smoke really uh, got to me. Well, first of all, what you got to do is you got to cut straight in here or undercut here and here make this overlap each other. Okay. So, and then they're going to, we're going to have little feathers or, yeah, I guess it'd be feathers kind of like cut in like this on these two layers. After we do the, the these first cuts and then there'll be big wings down here. Does that make sense? And then for this, these feathers, I'm just going to do little cuts like this. And then we got to do the, the eyes. I think I'm going to do these ones kind of standard, like kind of like that. And then th this one here up top here, I'm going to kind of do crosses like that. I know it zooms in and zoom out and so, sorry about that. And then this, these ones, I'll just do like little things like this and like that. And you could pull out your wood burner. I might even pull out my wood burner since I spent so much time on this is anyways. Okay. So with these first cuts, I'm going to use this uh, cut saw. This is the silver one. It's a taper burr. I'm going to carve, carve the lines and then I'm going to remove the wood 
So we'll make this one overlap like um, shingles, roof shingles or fist scales. And then we'll come in and we'll cut in all these things. It's hard to show. This is a hard carving to show on my YouTube because when the camera's in the overhead, pretend the camera's in the overhead right now, when I'm carving it, you can't see. So I have to figure out, ah, oh boy. Okay, so Carving Fusion voiceover. Hey, Studio on the Lake, how you doing? Hope you're doing good, man. Need more uh, Ben Studio on the Lake videos. We're kind of uh, running low on them. So, man, what can I say about this wood? It just smokes, you know? Like, even if I was going to use a diamond burr on it, it would just smoke. It's not like I'm pushing too hard there or the burrs dull, the bits dull. It just smokes. This, um, you know, these are basic wing patterns anybody can do. I, I Sooner or later, I need to uh, upgrade my wing patterns, but this is just kind of like, um, I guess you could say stock wing patterns just to show people that there's wings and there's feathers. There's nothing too tricky about this. Um, and actually, my wings pattern doesn't turn out too good here because I'm trying to remember that I'm filming and I'm trying to keep it in screen so when you're doing the um, owls like I said in the beginning of this video or another uh, other owl videos you can do owls any which way you want to do I'm gonna show you guys uh, fake owl eyes I got later on in this video <laughs> and um, you know just kind of take your time so the, the those three point uh, like uh, cutters you know they're cheap you get sets of five of them for like 10 bucks they're I'm, I'm using them actually quite a bit but they get dull super fast and they're not good for carving they're good for like like pretend it's knife carving it's good for um, stops and starts so you can see there I'm just blasting in some feather lines doing an undercut because you want to make them look like they're tucked underneath the top course like I said, sooner or later, I'm going to start working on more, not realism, but more kind of cooler wing patterns. I haven't even really thought that far ahead yet. Just kind of give them nice texture, nice flow. The bottom ones actually look pretty terrible on this owl wing because um, I wasn't really f focusing on the... It's, it's always good to draw them on first. And I wasn't really focusing on the pitch and the, the angle. It's okay though. They still say what they are. And again, everybody, it's owls. You know, like, the, see how they're kind of bent there a little bit too much? Friggin' owls. These are my own owl wings. It doesn't matter. If somebody says, oh, those aren't, those wings aren't correct down there. I'm like, tell me anything about this owl that's correct. I didn't try to carve a correct owl. This is a carving fusion owl. So what's your point? They'll be like, well, you know, your wings aren't that correct. I'm like, well, do you want me to, do I need to repeat myself? So there's a cut saw, excuse me, taper. I think it was a silver burr. And I'm just roughing out my getting, sorry about the filming, everybody. I'm just roughing out the uh, cut lines, smoothing everything off. And you have to, you don't have to, but you want to make your ling, wings look like they're pushed forward. You'll see later in this video, I don't even know if I talk about it, but I do like um, fish scales or kind of like dragon scale things. I'm doing this voiceover. I, I did this owl carving um, yesterday. Well, I started it two days ago, but I did this piece of it yesterday. So I kind of forget what I'm, I say in the video. So you might hear me repeat myself a few times. But, you know, just blast in your wings. Have a good time. And if it, they look like wings, well, they look like wings. So I, I'm going to pull out the aluminum cutter. I don't know if I show it in the video, but I pull out the aluminum cutter. No, I didn't show it in the video, but I did the top piece of the wing there with the aluminum cutting bit, like I do wizard hairs sometimes, beard hairs. And that's a Peter Sanding mandrel with uh, scotch Bright. Okay, there you can see how I carved the wing patterns in. They're not perfect. They're kind of, these ones should be more sloped back this way, but I was, you know, this might be the, one of the hardest videos I've made on YouTube because it's this, it's so deep inside here and it's, I got to hold it at different angles. And, you know, when you're doing your carving, you guys aren't going to be filming for YouTube, but just make sure you're set up in a nice area. You can see everything. You can see all angles and stuff and be comfortable. That's a big, be safe. 
three rules. Well, not rules, but whatever. Be safe, be comfortable, and be happy. Now, here's a shout out to a subscriber and a friend, Big L. I guess it's time to uh, take it over to the chainsaw carving shop and uh, see if we can get this uh, light in there because, well, this is going to be a lamp. And I don't want to do it here. So let's go over to the, uh, this is a uh, uh, light from one of those Halayim, you know, those, those salt lamps. I got like five of these here. I ordered it on Amazon last year. So I figured I should start using them up. So what I got to do is before I get over to the carving shop, I get all too crazy because I get super excited there. I got a, I got this drawn out here to go in the bottom. And then I got to get my saw or, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to carve some of this. So this sits flush in there and I got to get my saw running up there. So it, carves back here hollow so the light will come up all the way around the owl and it's tricky because like this isn't a straight piece the struggle is real friends the struggle is real okay so here i am back at the carving tent i've spent more time on this freaking silly little owl than i did this and this and that and that so um i forgot the light base Good thing that I marked it out on the bottom, okay? I'll use the center one there. I know, yeah, that's my scribbling. So there's a reason why I didn't carve this part hollow. Because the life's, light's going to be right about here. And I hate it when you can see the light, the bulb itself, in an actual piece. So hopefully we'll be able to hide the light behind this owl and then this part here. So I figured... <sighs> Before I pull out the chainsaw, I got these four snare bits. I'll start off with this. This is solid. My cut will be true. Like it won't bend. Like when you use these long spade bits, they bend in the wood. So I might finish it up with this because this isn't long enough for the light. See? So I'll do this first, and I also might use my Mampa cutter. See this cutter here? It's Mampa tools. Just on a grinder. Let's see how far this goes up. So, sorry. This, um, I might be able to use this Mampa cutter. I'm going to start off with the Forester bit, okay? I got this set on Amazon a few years back. I'm going to start off with this, then I'm going to switch to this. And then if I got to use this to get up and clean up, because I got to go from under, right? Clean up back there, then I'll do it. But I got to do it all at an angle. And I got to clamp this down in the jaw horse. This is a really um, useful vice for all those, they're not cheap, but for all those wanting to get into bigger carving. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna lock this in, but I'll just show you quickly for all you that don't know So this just goes like this Then you put your piece in there you click it down and you lock it in with your foot. All right Let's give you a bigger bigger view. Okay, so you unlock it click it with your foot. It's unlocked So pretend there's a piece of wood in there tighten it up Lock it and then lock it with your foot tighten it up good now. You got a piece solid fastened in there okay start off with the forester bit and let's go with this angle right here I should have my uh, electric drill my plug-in one what the fuck's going on with this thing Okay.
Now I gotta pull my electric drill out. Hopefully this chuck fits in there. Okay, so it fits. I'm such a freaking hack, you know, I just get shit done, that's all. You gotta be careful of this, cause this is a, this is like a wrist breaker, you know. See what I mean? Where it catches like that, snap your wrist. Man, this cedar, it's bone dry, but it just smokes like freaking crazy. Wrist breaker. Whoa. Don't be a Jordy. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Break time. <laughs> okay, so you guys can see how far I got the hole in there. So now I'm going to switch to the Mampa cutter. Um, I know it's getting pretty dull. You can spin these little cutting teeth around. See, there's one, two, three. But um, I just think it's probably, well, time to get some new cutters. All right, so it's maxed out. So I started yelling because I cut through the back there and I didn't want to cut through the back, but shit happens. Okay. Uh, where's the air blower? So yeah, it's, it's it kind of worked out perfect. It it's, it worked all the way around it, so the light can come through around the back. You guys, see that? But so this is where it came through the bark in the back. Um. Well, it's okay if light shines out the back of it too. I guess. I think. So, but that's all right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some black spray paint if I got some here. Actually, I got to trim this down too so the light, I'll do that when I get home. I'm going to get some black spray paint. I'm going to spray in here black all on the inside. Maybe with a touch of red. Then I'm going to burn the hell out of it. So I decide that I'm going to burn it first to get rid of any fuzzies inside there. Try not to burn the owl too much. That's a cool thumbnail. I'm going to use that right there. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
This wood's just so friggin' smoky, man, the whole time. The whole time. Holy fucking! <coughs> I inhaled the biggest puff of smoke there. Well, there's still maybe this will start on fire because there's still. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a red in there. Oh yeah. Perfect, not too much, just a little bit. Good enough. Yeah, that's cool. I like this here might have I might have to recarve that in where it burnt too much. Don't care. I got a little beauty in a torch at home I can do there. Oh, um, I got some real owl eyes here. Not some real ones, but some plastic ones. And for like when I used to put them in the wizards and stuff like that. Let's see if I can find them. All right. So welcome to the drawer of bullshit. Nothing in there. Nothing there. Nothing. Oh, what was that? Yeah, so like little, little ones like this. Look at that. There. <laughs> Where's the, I got like a bag with hundreds of them in there. Look at them all of them down here. Look at them all. See, look. Bags, plastic owl eyes. Another bag. Yep. Told ya, don't bullshit. Oh, here's another one. Those ones are nice. The whole bag must have spilled out, look. Told ya. Okay, so I got the uh, bag of owl eyes to take home. So let's see what we fucking got. Let's see what's in the other drawer of bullshit. Oh, look at all this bullshit in here. Sandpaper, tape measures, empty bottles, air compressor things, for air things. Where's that bag? Oh, what's here? No, oh, more bullshit. What's in here? I don't know, just a piece of something. Bullshit. Let's see what's in the bottom one. Hold on a second. There's that great green paint I've been looking for. Oh, look at all the paints I got in there. Holy shit. Oh, there's some more green. Hey, there's a little brush. <laughs> okay, what's in drawer number three? More sandpaper. And extension cords and no freaking God, fucking propane tank cords. Okay, so enough of the silliness. I think I'll probably carve these out and put some nicer eyes, fake eyes inside here when I get home. Um, so this is all char here, right? You know, it's dirty. So I'm gonna use that uh, scotch brite to clean this up when I get home. And um, you know, back here, like farther back where the light is, I, I want to spray it with some, uh, this is satin clear coat, but I want to get gloss because I want it to be shiny to let the light reflect. Because I can see there, see that, I don't know if you guys can see, see that edge there? You know, that kind of stops the light, but well, you know, whatever, just have a good time. Rock it.
Yep, sure enough, I left this home. It was sitting on the cardboard on my toolbox thing. I got some uh, clear gloss. I'm going to have to leave this video here because you got to remember that I sprayed it and I don't want to sand a bunch of stuff and then get a bunch of sawdust on the wet clear. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more coats of this gloss. So the back and side there is kind of glossy. Um, I'll touch up all this stuff here. You know, I'll hit it with the uh, buffing thing with the scotch Bright. So these um, eyes, these are just like little doll eyes that I got on Amazon. You got to be careful. I got so many, I got so much more than this too, all of these. You just got to be careful because they usually say millimeter size and you got to figure out what, what that is to like metric size or whatever. You know what I mean? So I think these ones are probably like 10 millimeters. They come in all different um, things. I like these ones though, because uh, I don't know, it's been years since I got these, but they're plastic doll eyes, right? You see there? Sometimes you gotta buy them. Well, you gotta buy them and they got the backs too. But um, these ones kind of got the shiny things on the outside where it's orange there. And they got yellow ones. These ones are kind of, got scratched up being in that drawer for so long. Or you get ones like this that are just flat kind of. Come on. You know, actually, these are real glass ones, but the backs are paper and they fade after a while. So, you know, they, you get them all different shapes and sizes. See, like, look at the size of this one. That one would be pretty good in there. Yeah, so I, this video is, like I said in the first video, it's going to be a three-part series. There's still lots of work to do. I am going to put these eyes in. I just don't really like the way those ones turned out. <clears throat> They're not bad. They're good enough. But, you know, you could paint them like that too. And so, yeah, I got something else I want to show you guys that I got. Jordy Gets. Okay. So the next one is going to be cleaning all this up, recarving stuff, figuring out if we're going to paint it, cleaning up all the black in here to make it like old burnt wood, cleaning up all the outside of this bark, and uh, putting the light in and see how it looks. So when I was at my carving tent the other day, my buddy Stu came by and he brought me a stick with a burl on it. I sanded it up with the uh, with my uh, grinder. Let's give it a water test. Yep, bird's eye. So this uh, I'll carve this probably next winter. I'm not too sure what I'll do, but there's that. You guys aren't going to believe this. He gave me another grapevine uh, burl. Look at that. This is like a fake plant, put a planter in there or something. But you guys seen that uh, grapevine that I carved recently? The beautiful colors inside of this wood. But man, is this wood ever tough wood to carve? Look at that, all weird faces. It looks like there's an eye right in there. There's a nose here and a, no a nose and an eye. Y you know, like a here's a friggin' finger. <laughs> It, you know, like there's just so much like a nose and an eye here. There's an eye down there. There's just so much you can do, right? Like, look, here's a nose. Here's an eyebrow. You know, so it's pretty awesome. Thanks so much, Stu, if you watched this. Oh, this was drilled through before. There's a hole that goes right through it. So this is already a flat sitter or it could even be a wall hanger, actually, because it's been cut flat on the bottom. So you guys think that's cool. Well, I think it is. Wait till you see what I'm going to show next. Holy, look at the size of this one. It's, imagine how big this grapevine was and how old it was. This is a big, huge uh, grapevine burl. Man, the colors in these pieces are just amazing. And this looks like a big heart, doesn't it? Looks like a friggin' heart. If you flip it upside, I don't know. It's just crazy, like... This is definitely a wintertime carving for me. Oh, man, this wood is so hard. It's like carving steel. But I'm going to carve it next winter. Look at it all. This would be the grapevines that come out, the, the sticks. It's just freaking amazing. You know, you, try, you have to have an open mind to carve something like that. Let's see here. Look at it. Just friggin' amazing. So, thanks again, Stu. Stu gave this to me. 
And uh, man, that's that's just a lot of carving. A lot of this would probably be like hundred hours carving this with the Dremel and uh, my ram carver and all the other tools and stuff. So I don't know. You got to have a real big imagination to do something like this. Sure do. Okay, so that's it, everybody. Um, we'll get this finished really soon. Probably. Well, I, I like to do do these videos so like first day, second day, third day. So you'll see it on the third day tomorrow when you watch it tomorrow. But then I don't know when tomorrow is, so I don't know what day I'll call it. But we'll just say tomorrow. Carving Fusion, over and out.